Hello everybody, my name is Brett Dietz. I'm a composer and percussionist and associate professor of music at Louisiana State University. Joining me on stage in the School of Music uh, recital hall is composer David Stock. We're actually recording a, uh, a CD of all of David Stock's uh, percussion music and uh, David's uh, going to talk to us a little bit about uh, percussion and some other things, so welcome David. Thanks. Uh, my first question is, um, tell me about your, your uh, writing for percussion and, and when did it become something that you, know, you thought was really something that was important to the style of your music? Well, first of all, the first thing I wrote, I guess, that was heavily percussion was a film score. Uh, when I was just finished my master's degree at Carnegie Tech, which is now Carnegie Mellon University, uh, a friend of mine uh, was getting his master's degree in film, or senior degree or something or other, and his project was essentially a silent film with one word in it. So I had to write 30 minutes of music under the most primitive conditions, and so most of it was percussion because then I didn't need to use a piano. I didn't own a piano at that time, and I could just construct it from rhythmic cells and things like that. And that turned into a piece, eventually a concert piece, called Shadow Music which we're eventually going to record. But uh, because I think of myself as a very rhythmic-driven composer, percussion has always been rather integral to my orchestra or wind symphony or any other kind of writing. And I guess the next big step was a uh, piece that I wrote for a group called Tempest Fugit, which you seem to have co-founded. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, a while back. Yes, a while back. <laughs> anyway, this piece is called uh, Flying Time. And so I've uh, gone on from there, written a lot of stuff for, for percussion, you know, including now a concerto. Mm. That's great. Tell us a little bit um, about you know, your, your history as a composer. I mean, you're, you're an award-winning composer. You've been commissioned by uh, the New York Phil, the Pittsburgh Symphony, the Seattle Symphony. When did you know you wanted to be a composer? When did it start? Oh, boy. Well, I guess I first started trying to write music when I was about 15. And it was pretty awful at first, but of course it is for everybody. But uh, surely after a year or two, I knew that this was going to be part of my life. Uh, I didn't start off in music, though, in college. Uh, I foolishly went into science, where I didn't belong at all. Hung out there for two and a half miserable years before switching into music. And uh, I was a trumpet player. I was a pretty good one. So I have an undergraduate degree in trumpet, an undergraduate degree in composition, two masters in composition, and all that stuff put together doesn't help you write good music unless you know you put, just do it. Okay, so uh, and then you uh, tell us a little bit about. Um, I guess you're gonna you're gonna hate me for saying it, but your, uh, ac your academic career. <laughs> uh, no, I can't hate you. <laughs> Give me a break. Well, so, I've taught at many places. Right. I was uh, I taught at uh, the Cleveland Institute of Music and uh, at the University of Pittsburgh a couple of times. Antioch College, graduate uh, uh, at the New England Conservatory of Music. I was a graduate assistant at Brandeis. And for a long time, academia and I did not do well with each other. I mean, it just wasn't where I really belonged at that time of my life. So I spent a lot of years outside the academic world. I taught full time, I think, two years out of 16 or 17. And uh, it just, I was very lucky eventually that our former dean of Duquesne, uh, uh, Michael Coomer, invented a job for me at Duquesne. So uh, otherwise I could have never retired mm -hmm. from anything. I mean, I'd still be out there hustling. Well, that's where, you know, sort of I, I came into play into your life and you into mine. I mean, because you're you know, really one of my uh, biggest influences in music. And uh, I, was a, I was an undergraduate student at uh, Duquesne University where I first met David, and I played in the contemporary ensemble. Now, David also was the, um, uh, founder of the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble, uh, and he was the conductor for 25 years, right? Only 23. Only, yeah, only, only 23. Let's not exaggerate. Okay, so, um, <laughs> and what was really great about um, having you there, and, and uh, uh, for me as a student, was um, you, were, you would do a premiere with the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble, and then all of a sudden, the, the little kids, we get to come in and play the second uh, kind of quasi-premiere uh, after that. But can you... Uh, Tell us a little bit about some of the works that you've been involved in commissioning with the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble over those 23 years. Well, there's so many. I mean, there, I forget, close to 200, or maybe it's past 200. I never, never stopped to count. 
But uh, just off the top of my head, uh, Cheating, Lying, Stealing by David Lang. Uh, we were part of the consortium that commissioned that, and we certainly did the first performance. Uh, John Cage's Music for Six was written especially for us to perform at the Charles Ives Center in Connecticut. We certainly did the premiere. And um, Don Freud's Hard Cells, which of the Symphonietta type pieces, has been done a lot. Uh, a couple of pieces by Australian composers. My friends uh, from Australia wrote pieces for us that uh, slang by, by uh, Gerard Brophy. And don't ask me the name of the piece by <laughs> one of my other friends. Terrific music. Just really unusual and different. And uh, I mean, there were so many, you know, that we did. And we performed pieces by just about every composer. Um, and I kept up some of that at Duquesne, once we had the Duquesne Contemporary Ensemble with the students, uh, with having people write pieces for us. And uh, as you say, we got to repeat things. So some pieces, even if I didn't, we didn't do the premiere, we got to, I got to conduct several times with PNME and eventually with Duquesne. And that, you really get inside a piece much better, obviously, the more you get to do it. And you recognize that some pieces are just, they're just really good, you know, and they're a lot better than the other pieces. It may not be instantly obvious, 